In a moment of injustice, a quiet grandmother is humiliated in front of her grandchildren by police officers who think they know her story. But they have no idea who she truly is, or the power she once wielded. As her past begins to unravel, a shocking truth emerges, sparking a movement no one saw coming. Who is Evelyn Carter, and why does her arrest ignite a firestorm? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the word you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to like and subscribe. It was an ordinary Tuesday afternoon, the kind where nothing remarkable seemed likely to happen. Evelyn Carter, a 74-year-old grandmother, gently tugged the hands of her two young grandchildren, Avery and Jordan, as they stepped out of the house. The cool autumn breeze rustled the golden leaves and the air was filled with the faint smell of pumpkin spice and wood smoke. Evelyn's home in the quiet suburban town of Rivertown was simple but welcoming, a small refuge where she lived peacefully with her family. To those who knew her, Evelyn was the picture of grace, soft-spoken, humble and deeply respected. At her age, she enjoyed the tranquility of watching her grandchildren grow up living a life far removed from the struggles she once knew. She rarely spoke about her past, even though there was an undeniable presence about her, an air of quiet authority. Few in Rivertown knew the depths of her history or the battles she had once fought. Today, Evelyn had decided to take Avery and Jordan to the upscale shopping district on Maple Street. It was a rare trip. Maple Street was known for its high-end boutiques, the kind of places where the wealthy gathered. Evelyn herself rarely shopped there, but with her daughter's birthday approaching, she thought it might be nice to find a special gift. She dressed modestly as always, in a light cardigan and a pair of comfortable shoes, her graying hair neatly tucked into a soft bun. The sidewalks were filled with well-dressed shoppers, and as Evelyn entered one of the more exclusive stores with her grandchildren, the atmosphere changed. She felt it immediately. The subtle shift in the air, the lingering glances, the way the sales staff suddenly seemed on edge. But it was a feeling she had grown used to over the years. In places like these, people often looked at her with a certain suspicion, though she had long since learned to ignore it. As she entered, her grandchildren's small hands in hers, she could feel the eyes of the employees tracking her every movement. It wasn't long before Kyle, a young, arrogant clerk in his early twenties, with slicked back hair and a superior smirk, noticed her. His gaze lingered on her, not with curiosity, but with barely concealed disdain. Evelyn was black, elderly, and modestly dressed, three strikes against her in his mind. From his position behind the counter, Kyle leaned toward a fellow clerk. What's she doing in here? He muttered loud enough for Evelyn to hear. She doesn't look like she can afford to breathe the air in this place. Evelyn, accustomed to such whispers, ignored the slight, choosing to focus on her grandchildren and the sparkling jewelry under the boutique's bright lights. She gently guided Avery and Jordan to a nearby display case, pointing out a delicate necklace, a gold chain adorned with a small, elegant pendant. It reminded her of something her daughter had once admired, as Evelyn picked up the necklace, her hands moving carefully, Kyle's eyes sharpened. He had been watching her ever since she walked in, convinced that someone like her didn't belong. To Kyle, she was a potential thief, not a customer. He sauntered over, each step deliberate, as if preparing for a confrontation. His posture screamed arrogance, his smirk now full-fledged. Ma'am, can I help you with something? His voice was sickly sweet laced with an undercurrent of suspicion. Evelyn looked up calmly, meeting his gaze without flinching. No, thank you, she said softly. I'm just browsing. Kyle's eyes darted to the necklace in her hand. You sure? He pressed, his tone growing more condescending. That's a pretty expensive piece you're holding. Maybe I should take it before it slips through your fingers. The insinuation hit hard. His words were a thinly veiled accusation. He wasn't offering assistance. He was accusing. He was accusing her of something she hadn't done, hadn't even thought of doing. 
but Evelyn had faced this before. Decades of casual institutional racism had taught her how to maintain her composure, even in the face of such blatant disrespect. I can handle it, Evelyn replied evenly, though her jaw tightened ever so slightly. Kyle crossed his arms, his smirk widening. Just making sure. We've had issues, you know. People picking up things they can't pay for. You never know. Behind him, the other employees whispered and snickered, their eyes fixed on Evelyn. They weren't curious, they were judgmental. To them, she was guilty by appearance alone. Evelyn placed the necklace back in its display case carefully. Is there a problem? She asked, her voice calm but firm. Kyle's smirk faltered, but only for a second. Not yet, he said, his words dripping with condescension. But you'd better watch it. We don't tolerate shoplifters. The word shoplifter hung in the air, ugly and accusatory. Avery, standing close by, sensed the tension, her small hand gripping her grandmother's cardigan tightly. Jordan's eyes darted back and forth between Kyle and Evelyn, his young face filled with confusion. Kyle stepped closer, his eyes narrowing. Why don't I take that necklace to the register for you? We wouldn't want any misunderstandings. Evelyn knew exactly what he was implying. To him, she was a criminal, not a grandmother out shopping for her daughter. But she refused to give him the satisfaction of rising to the bait. No need, she said, her voice steady. I'll let you know if I decide to purchase it. Kyle's smirk disappeared completely. He stared at her for a long moment, then turned sharply, walking away with a shake of his head. To him, this was all the proof he needed. She was trouble, and he was going to make sure she didn't get away with it. Unbeknownst to Evelyn, Kyle had already made the decision to call the police. He spoke quickly and confidently, reporting that a suspicious individual was handling expensive items and refusing assistance. His tone left no room for doubt. To the dispatcher, it sounded like a clear-cut case of attempted theft. When the police arrived, Officer Brian Mullins led the charge. Mullins was known for being tough, too tough, some might say. He was a tall, burly man with a permanent scowl etched into his face and a swagger that made it clear he believed in the absolute authority of the badge. To him, anyone who crossed his path was guilty until proven innocent, especially if they didn't look like they belonged. As Mullins entered the boutique, his eyes immediately locked onto Evelyn, standing calmly by the display case with her grandchildren. He approached her with heavy, deliberate steps, already forming an opinion about her before he had even spoken. Kyle rushed over to meet Mullins, his voice loud and exaggerated. That's her, he said, pointing at Evelyn. She was messing with the expensive jewellery, acting all shady. I'm pretty sure she was planning to steal something. Mullins nodded, his expression grim. He didn't question it. To him, it made perfect sense. An older black woman in a high-end boutique with modest clothing and two kids. She didn't belong here. She was probably one of those people. The type who always caused trouble. Mullins strode over to Evelyn, his hand already hovering near his belt, where his handcuffs dangled. Mom, he said, his voice cold and authoritative. I need you to step away from the display. Evelyn turned to face him her heart sinking as she saw the hardened look in his eyes. She knew that look. It was the look of a man who had already made up his mind. I haven't done anything wrong, she said, her voice steady but calm. I was just browsing. Mullins raised an eyebrow, glancing briefly at Kyle, who stood behind him, nodding eagerly. That's not what we've been told, he said, his tone condescending. We have a report that you've been acting suspiciously. Evelyn's jaw tightened. I've done nothing but look at a necklace. You can check your cameras. Mullins sneered, stepping closer. People like you always have an excuse. People like you. The words were heavy with prejudice, meant to demean, to strip away her dignity. Evelyn's stomach churned, but she didn't flinch. She had faced worse in her life. Look. Mullins continued. We can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. 
You either come with us, or we'll have to take you in forcefully. At that moment, Avery and Jordan clung to their grandmother, their small faces filled with fear. Grandma? Avery whispered, her voice trembling. Evelyn looked down at her grandchildren, her heart breaking for them. She knew she had done nothing wrong, but she also knew that arguing wouldn't change anything. Not here. Not with these men. This was not about justice. This was about power, about showing her that she was less than. Without waiting for a response, Mullins reached for his cuffs. Turn around, he ordered, his voice as cold as the metal he held. Evelyn stood frozen for a moment, disbelief flooding her senses. She glanced at Kyle, who was watching with a smug satisfaction, and then back at the officer. She knew there was no escape, no reasoning with them. Slowly, Evelyn turned, holding her head high, even as she felt the cold steel of the handcuffs clamp down on her wrists. The humiliation was overwhelming, but she refused to let it show. As Mullins pulled her hands behind her back, the tears began to flow from Avery's eyes. Grandma, no, she cried, her voice small and terrified. Jordan's face crumpled in confusion, his wide eyes filled with fear as he watched his beloved grandmother, his protector, his source of comfort, being treated like a criminal. He didn't understand what was happening, but he knew it was wrong. Why are you taking my grandma? Jordan asked, his small voice breaking as he tried to pull at the sleeve of Officer Mullins. His grip on the officer's arm was nothing compared to the rigid determination etched in the man's face. Step aside, kid, Mullins said brusquely, shaking off Jordan's hand with a dismissive gesture. His eyes never left Evelyn, cold and full of judgment, as if she were nothing more than a common thief. Avery, still crying, reached out as if to shield her grandmother. Please don't take her. She didn't do anything, she sobbed, her tiny voice cracking with the effort of trying to make someone, anyone, understand the injustice happening before her eyes. But Mullins didn't care. Neither did Kyle, who stood a few feet away with his arms crossed, the faint trace of a smile tugging at the corner of his lips. To him, this was justice. To see someone like Evelyn, someone he had prejudged the moment she walked into the store, being taken away was all the confirmation he needed that he had been right all along. In his eyes, she was guilty simply for existing in his world. Evelyn, though humiliated beyond words, refused to let her grandchildren see her break. Her strength had always been her shield, and she wouldn't allow these men, or anyone else, to take that away from her. She stood tall, even with her wrists bound behind her back, and turned her gaze toward Avery and Jordan, offering them the only thing she could in that moment, a calm reassurance. It's okay, sweethearts, Evelyn said softly, her voice gentle but firm. I'll be all right. You two stay together and be brave for me. Her words seemed to quiet them for a moment, though the fear in their eyes hadn't faded. Evelyn's heart ached, not for herself, but for the innocence her grandchildren were losing in real time. They were witnessing, perhaps for the first time, the cruel reality of a world that judged them for their skin color, their background, and nothing else. Officer Mullins tugged at her arm, pulling her toward the store's exit. The bright lights of the boutique seemed almost blinding as they made their way out, the eyes of shoppers and passers-by fixed on the scene unfolding before them. Some stared in shock, others in curiosity. No one stepped forward to help. Some even filmed the scene on their phones, their cameras capturing every humiliating second of Evelyn's arrest. Outside, the police car's lights flashed, reflecting off the glass storefronts of the high-end district. As Evelyn was led out in handcuffs, her grandchildren trailing behind, a sea of murmurs rose from the growing crowd. What's going on? Someone asked. Did she steal something? Another voice chimed in. She's being arrested, but she's an old lady, came another incredulous voice. The weight of the situation bore down on Evelyn, but she kept her chin lifted, refusing to show weakness. She wasn't guilty, and she knew it, 
But she also knew that in this world, being innocent didn't always protect you. One of those onlookers was a young woman named Sarah, who had been shopping nearby when she noticed the commotion. She had her phone out, recording the entire incident, her heart pounding with anger at what she was witnessing. She had seen everything, from Kyle's thinly veiled accusations to Officer Mullins's aggressive arrest. To her, this wasn't just a shoplifting incident. This was something deeper, something far more disturbing. This is wrong, Sarah muttered to herself as she filmed. They're arresting an old woman in front of her grandkids for doing nothing. By the time the police car pulled away, Sarah had already uploaded the video to social media, tagging it with captions that read, Elderly black woman arrested in front of her grandchildren. No explanation given. Racism at its finest in Rivertown. The video quickly gained traction, shared by people across the town, and within hours, it had spread beyond Rivertown. The sight of an elderly woman being handcuffed, her crying grandchildren by her side, struck a chord with viewers. People from all over began expressing their outrage, calling for an investigation into the officers involved, questioning the store's motives and demanding answers. The video of Evelyn's arrest had gone viral by the end of the day, racking up thousands of views and comments. But as people shared it, someone recognized Evelyn's face. Someone who knew that she wasn't just any grandmother. Harriet, an old friend of Evelyn's from years ago, saw the video and was immediately struck by the familiarity of the woman's face. She hadn't seen Evelyn in years, but there was no mistaking her. That's Evelyn Carter, Harriet said aloud, her voice shaking as she spoke to her grown children. I haven't seen her in decades, but that woman, they have no idea who she is. What do you mean, Mom? Her son asked, leaning over to watch the video. Harriet's eyes filled with tears as she began to recall the past. Memories of Evelyn leading marches, speaking passionately about justice and equality. She's not just any woman, Harriet said. Evelyn was one of the most important civil rights leaders in our town back in the day. She's the reason we have the anti-discrimination laws we do now. Her children listened, shocked by what they were hearing. They had never known Evelyn's full story nor had they realized that the woman in the video had once been a towering figure in the fight for equality. We need to let people know, Harriet said, her voice firm. They arrested a hero, and they don't even know it. It didn't take long for the video of Evelyn's unjust arrest to go viral. The scene of a dignified elderly black woman being handcuffed in front of her two crying grandchildren quickly struck a nerve with the public. Comments flooded in from people of all races, backgrounds and experiences, each expressing outrage, disbelief and sympathy. The hashtags, just justice for Evelyn and end racism, in Rivertown, trended within hours. But as the video spread like wildfire across social media, something unexpected happened. Someone recognized her. In a small home not far from where Evelyn lived, an old friend named Harriet Daniels scrolled through her phone, catching glimpses of the viral video everyone was talking about. Harriet had known Evelyn for decades, though they had lost touch over the years. But there was no mistaking that face, the quiet strength, the familiar grace under fire. Her hand trembled as she paused the video. That's Evelyn, Harriet whispered to herself, her eyes wide with shock. She sat back in her chair, stunned, Memories flooding back like a torrent she couldn't control. Evelyn wasn't just anyone. Harriet knew the truth about who she was, about what she had done for their community long ago. That evening, Harriet gathered her children around, the room heavy with the weight of the past. Her grown son, Mark, noticed the worry in his mother's face. Mum, what's wrong? You know her, he asked, pointing to the image of Evelyn frozen on the phone screen. Harriet's voice shook with emotion as she began to speak. Yes, I do. That's Evelyn Carter. But she wasn't always just a grandmother. She's so much more than that. And so, Harriet began to tell her children the stories she had kept inside for years. Evelyn had been a force of nature, 
a leader in their community during the civil rights movement. Back in the 1960s and 1970s, when the country was ablaze with protests and demands for justice, Evelyn had been right at the front lines, fighting for change in their small, segregated town. She led protests, Harriet said, her voice filled with pride. She was fearless. Back when schools were still segregated, Evelyn organized the parents in our neighborhood. She fought for our kids to have the same opportunities as the white children. She marched, she spoke out, and she never backed down, not even when they arrested her. Mark listened, stunned. He had never heard this side of the story. Evelyn had always seemed so quiet, reserved. The idea that she had once been a fiery leader, fighting against segregation, seemed almost impossible. Why didn't anyone know about this? Mark asked. Harriet shook her head, sighing deeply. Evelyn didn't like talking about those days. After she helped change the segregation laws here in Rivertown, she faded into the background. I think the fight took a toll on her, but we wouldn't have the laws we do now if it weren't for her. As Harriet shared more stories about Evelyn, the reader is taken back in time. The narrative shifts between the present day and the turbulent decades of the 1960s and 1970s, where Evelyn was not the quiet grandmother people saw today, but a fierce and fearless civil rights activist. Back then, Rivertown had been a much different place. Schools were divided by race, with black children forced to attend poorly funded institutions, while white children went to better equipped schools. Housing was segregated, and discriminatory laws kept black families in certain neighborhoods, limiting their opportunities. Evelyn had refused to accept this, she had organized protests, led marches, and given powerful speeches that stirred the hearts of everyone who heard her. In one flashback, we see Evelyn standing at the front of a crowd, her hand gripping a megaphone, her voice echoing through the streets as she demanded equal rights for her community. We will not be silent, Evelyn had shouted to the crowd, her voice filled with conviction. We will not let them treat us as less than human. Our children deserve better. Our families deserve better, and we will not stop until we get it. She was a leader, a trailblazer, and when the segregationists fought back, when they tried to intimidate her, threaten her, and even have her arrested, Evelyn stood tall. She was arrested multiple times during the protests, but she never let that stop her. Each time she came back stronger, more determined to change the laws that oppressed her people. Through the narrative, readers begin to realize that the quiet, unassuming grandmother who was handcuffed in front of her grandchildren was, in fact, a hero. She was a woman who had changed the course of history in their town, a woman whose legacy had been forgotten by time, but not by those who had lived through it. As Harriet's story about Evelyn's incredible past began to unfold, her nephew, Marcus, was deeply moved. The more he listened to his aunt recount the history of Evelyn's activism, the more he realized something had to be done. The world needed to know who Evelyn Carter really was. The viral video of her arrest painted a picture of an innocent woman wronged, but it didn't tell the full story. It didn't show the power, the resilience, or the impact Evelyn had made. Marcus, a journalist and avid social media user, decided he couldn't stay silent. He was going to make sure the world knew the truth. That evening, he sat down and began writing a long-form article, weaving together Harriet's memories and stories with historical records and photographs of Evelyn during the civil rights movement. His article, titled The Woman Behind the Viral Video, The Untold Story of Civil Rights Leader Evelyn Carter, detailed Evelyn's fight against segregation in schools, her role in changing housing laws, and the immense personal sacrifice she had made for the cause. He included old photographs of Evelyn leading marches, giving speeches, and even a haunting image of her being arrested during a protest in the 1970s, an image eerily similar to the viral footage of her recent arrest. When Marcus published the article, he had no idea how quickly it would catch fire. Within hours, the post was being shared across social media platforms, garnering thousands of likes and comments. People were outraged, 
that someone who had done so much for her community was treated so poorly. They were inspired by Evelyn's story, moved by her courage, and angered by the injustice she had faced, both in the past and present. The article caused a ripple effect. Investigative journalists began digging deeper into Evelyn's life, unearthing newspaper clippings and photographs that had long been forgotten. Articles from the 1970s showed a younger Evelyn standing side by side with other prominent civil rights leaders, speaking at rallies and working tirelessly behind the scenes to dismantle the laws that kept her community oppressed. More and more people learned about her contributions. Old friends and fellow activists came forward with their own stories about how Evelyn had inspired them, how she had been the force behind so many victories for their town. Local news stations picked up the story, and soon national outlets were covering it too. One evening, a reporter visited Evelyn at her home to ask about her past. Evelyn, at first reluctant, agreed to speak. She sat in her living room, her grandchildren playing quietly in the background, and began to tell her story. I never wanted to be in the spotlight, she said softly. I just wanted to do what was right. Back then, we didn't have the luxury of waiting for change. We had to fight for it. And I did what I could, with the help of so many others, to make sure our children had a better future. As Evelyn's story spread, the town of Rivertown began to change. People who had once been indifferent to her plight were now outraged on her behalf. Community leaders organized rallies, calling for justice, not only for Evelyn's recent arrest, but also for the systemic issues that still plagued their town. They demanded accountability from the police department, and Mullins, the officer who had arrested Evelyn, was placed under investigation. The real turning point came when the truth about Evelyn's legacy hit the broader community. People who had seen her every day, at the grocery store, in the park, walking with her grandchildren, were stunned. They had known Evelyn as a kind, quiet grandmother, but they had never imagined she was the same woman who had changed the course of their town's history. The revelation shocked many, but inspired even more. People began to see Evelyn in a new light, not just as a victim of injustice, but as a symbol of resilience and strength. Young people who hadn't known about the civil rights struggles of the past were now learning from Evelyn's example, organizing new movements for equality and justice. As the community rallied around her, Evelyn's quiet legacy turned into a powerful force for change once again. Her story was no longer forgotten, and her fight for justice, which had never truly ended, began to inspire a new generation. The town of Rivertown, which had once turned a blind eye to its own history of racial discrimination, was now forced to confront its past. Evelyn's story had become a rallying cry for action, and the pressure to right the wrongs done to her grew louder by the day. People who had once accepted the status quo were now standing in solidarity with Evelyn, demanding change not only in the police department, but also in the broader systems of racial inequality that still permeated the town. In the days following the viral article, more and more journalists descended upon Rivertown, each eager to uncover more of Evelyn's story. They tracked down old friends and fellow activists, each of whom had their own stories to share about Evelyn's leadership during the civil rights movement. One journalist uncovered a particularly powerful photo of Evelyn, marching arm in arm with other civil rights leaders, her face full of determination and resolve. The image, taken during one of Rivertown's largest protests against school segregation, quickly became iconic, circulating widely on social media as a symbol of Evelyn's enduring fight for justice. Though Evelyn had never sought recognition for her role in the civil rights movement, the attention surrounding her past was unavoidable. Her home became a place where journalists, community leaders and activists gathered, seeking her wisdom and guidance. Evelyn, still reluctant to step back into the spotlight, knew she could no longer remain silent. At the urging of her family, especially her grandchildren, who now understood the gravity of her contributions, Evelyn agreed to speak at a community rally. It was to be held in the same town square where, decades earlier, she had led protests that eventually helped dismantle segregation laws in Rivertown. The rally, 
organized by young activists inspired by Evelyn's story, was expected to draw a large crowd. The day of the rally arrived and hundreds of people gathered in the square. Some were there to show their support for Evelyn, while others came out of curiosity, eager to hear the woman who had once been at the forefront of the fight for equality. The energy in the air was palpable, a mix of anticipation, anger at the injustice she had faced, and hope for the future. Evelyn stood quietly at the edge of the stage, looking out over the crowd. Her heart was heavy with the weight of her past, but she also felt a sense of pride. Pride in her community for standing by her, pride in her grandchildren for understanding the importance of the fight, and pride in herself for never giving up, even when the world tried to silence her. When she stepped up to the podium, the crowd fell silent. The air was thick with emotion as people waited to hear what Evelyn had to say. She looked out at the sea of faces, young and old, black and white, men and women, all united in their desire for justice. I never thought I would be here again, Evelyn began, her voice calm but filled with power. Not after all these years. I thought the fight was behind me, but I see now that the fight never truly ends. Her words echoed across the square, resonating deeply with the crowd. She spoke of her past, of the protests she had led, the struggles she had faced, the victories that had seemed impossible at the time. She reminded them that the laws had changed, but the attitudes, the biases, the systemic racism that had always been there, those things still remained. I fought for justice back then, and I will continue to fight for it now, Evelyn said, her voice rising with conviction. But I cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We need to stand together, to raise our voices, to demand the change that we deserve. The crowd erupted in applause, moved by Evelyn's words. She had given them the push they needed, a reminder that the fight for justice was not over, that their voices mattered, and that together they could make a difference. From that moment on, Rivertown was never the same. The viral article, the investigative reports and Evelyn's powerful speech had sparked a movement that swept through the town like wildfire. Protests demanding police reform and racial justice were held regularly, and Evelyn's story became a symbol of resilience and resistance. Her name was spoken with reverence by young activists who saw her as a hero, a woman who had paved the way for the rights they now fought to protect. The police department, under immense pressure from the public, launched an official investigation into Officer Mullins and the events surrounding Evelyn's arrest. Mullins was placed on administrative leave and the investigation uncovered a pattern of discriminatory behavior in his past. Public outcry led to his eventual dismissal from the force and reforms within the department were promised to ensure that similar incidents would never happen again. But for Evelyn, it was never just about one officer or one incident. The fight was always bigger than that. It was about dismantling the structures of racism that had persisted for generations. And while the changes in Rivertown were a step in the right direction, Evelyn knew the fight for justice was far from over. In the months following the rally, Evelyn became a mentor to the young activists who had been inspired by her story. She sat with them, listened to their ideas, and shared her wisdom from the many battles she had fought over the years. She encouraged them to keep pushing, to never back down, and to always fight for what was right. Her grandchildren, Avery and Jordan, were forever changed by what they had witnessed. They had seen their grandmother's strength, not just in the face of injustice, but in the way she had used her life to make the world a better place. They grew up with a deep understanding of the importance of standing up for what was right, and they carried that lesson with them into their own lives. As the years went by, Evelyn watched with pride as the movement she had reignited grew. Her legacy lived on, not just in the laws she had helped change or the protests she had led, but in the hearts of the people who had been inspired by her courage and determination. In the end, Evelyn Carter's story was not one of defeat, but one of triumph. The injustice she had faced in her youth and the injustice of her recent arrest had only strengthened her resolve. 
Her quiet dignity had become a powerful force, a reminder that the fight for justice was not over, and that the power of one person, when supported by a community, could create lasting change. Evelyn had always believed in the power of solidarity, in the idea that when people stood together, they could overcome even the greatest of obstacles. And as she sat on her porch, watching her grandchildren play in the yard, she knew that the world they would inherit would be a little better, a little fairer, because of the work she had done. The viral video that had once seemed like an unfair moment of humiliation had become the catalyst for a movement reborn, a reminder that the past was never truly behind them and that the fight for justice must continue, always. Evelyn smiled softly, knowing that her legacy would live on. Not just in the history books, but in the hearts of those who had taken up the torch she had once carried so proudly.